what is 6? Six is a number, of course, so is pi, so is 187, and so as Euler's number e. We call these entities numbers. Now, what is f of x equals x plus 2? This would be a function, same as e to the power of x and mu. Now, what is d by dx? We all know d by dx as the derivative. What is a derivative, though? It is certainly not a number, and it's not a function either. It's an operator. d by dx is a spatial derivative operator. It acts on certain entities like functions and numbers. So when the Hamiltonian is introduced, we should know that it's an operator, indicated with an 8 symbol with a hat. Just like d by dx, being a spatial derivative operator, Hamiltonian is an operator for energy of a certain system. In our case, a certain quantum mechanical system. Not simply energy, though, the total energy of a system. In quantum mechanics, we define the Hamiltonian as the following. Hence, with this definition, we can rewrite the Schrodinger equation simply as h hat psi of r equals e psi of r, and that's it. This form is way more compact and easier to write. This is the time-independent equation, of course. We see no time variance there. For time-dependent equation, we can rewrite as h hat of capital psi r and t equals i h bar and the partial derivative in respect of t of capital psi of r and t. Again, to remark an important fact, this entity h hat is not a number or a function. It's an operator. An operator will turn one function into another one because it operates on it. Why would we use a Hamiltonian operator in quantum mechanics, other than to write the Schrodinger equation more compactly? This part is going to be a bit more technical. However, I think we can get through this. Let us look at the certain integral. Why this integral is important will become clearer in a bit, where capital Psi R of T is a wave equation of a quantum mechanical system of interest. We will expand capital Psi R of T to normalize energy eigenstates Psi N of N by using Fourier analysis as the following. So we are expanding this function in terms of other little functions. So we deduce this following term. We're just simply putting the definition of a Hamiltonian in this equation. And this will be equivalent to the following form. And so our complete integral is the following. Because of orthonormality of the basis functions psi n of r, only terms surviving the double summation are the ones which are n equals m. So we conclude this final integral. We can see that this is actually the formula for our expectation value, which we denote as the e between brackets. However, we already have a formula to calculate an expectation value in quantum mechanics. So why need this one specifically, or why need a new formula? Well, that's a good question. Why would we need another formula for the expectation value? Well, it's actually very simple. It is so because we don't even have to solve for eigenfunctions of the operator to get the result with our new formula. It's a simple trick that we can use. Hamiltonian is a very useful quantum mechanical operator. It's not just quantum mechanical, of course, but in our case, it is a quantum mechanical operator. And this operator can be used to see the future and predict the future in quantum mechanical systems. Taking the time-dependent Schrodinger equation and rewriting it from this to this, hence with this in our minds, presuming h hat does not depend on time, we would be able to write the following expression like this. If h hat was replaced by a number, we could perform an integration of this in order to get this expression. If, with some careful definition, it was allowed to do this, then we would have an operator that gives us the state at time t1 directly from t0. Look at the expression a bit more carefully. We have on the left hand side, capital Psi R T1, and this equals to a certain operator that we see multiplied by capital Psi R of T0. So we get capital Psi R T1 
from capital Psi R T zero, hence predicting the future of the quantum mechanical system. This is a very important tool in quantum mechanics as H hat is a linear operator with properties of linearity like the following. This is so for any linear operator. As this property works with any wave function, we can write this equation, which looks like, aha. Uh -huh. A quick question, though. What would an operator raised to a power mean? How would we understand it? Let's think about h hat to the power of 2. This might be thought as h hat multiplied by h hat. However, we need a better understanding than that if we want to put imaginary powers or rational ones or anything that we want. So h hat squared can be denoted as h hat multiplied by h hat acting on capital Psi R of so. So we have a Hamiltonian operator acting on a Hamiltonian operator acting on a time-dependent Schrodinger equation. Then for Psi N of R, we get this following expression, which is equal to algebraically E sub N squared Psi N of R. Hence, we can deduce this definition that we have. H hat to the power of N plus 1 is equal by definition of H hat acting on H hat to the power of M. Then we have this final definition, this final expression, where H hat of M acting on Psi N of R equals the nth energy state to the power of M of Psi N of R. Now let us look at the time evolution of a certain time dependent wave function between T0 and T1. Suppose the wave function that we have is time independent, so we signify that as Psi R at T0, which we expand in terms of energy eigenfunctions, Psi N R as the following, again from Fourier analysis. Once we multiply by the complex exponential factors of the time dependent for each basis function, we get this expression. We must think of this factor as given. I understand that this factor just came from nowhere. However, in an upcoming video, I will be improvising upon how we end up with this factor. But for now, the assumption that this certain factor turns a time independent wave function into a time dependent one is sufficient. I understand it came from nowhere. However, in a future video, I'll be talking about how this certain factor makes a time independent Schrodinger equation time dependent. So for the expression of our time dependence factor, which is raised over E, we can take the Taylor series of it and expand it as this, because that factor is basically e to the power of x, where x is our time dependence factor. In this expansion from our previous knowledge, where h hat to the power of m of psi n r equals nth energy state to the power of m of psi n of r, we write the whole expression as this. So because h hat and all its powers commute with scalar quantities, we can move the summation from the beginning of this equation to anywhere we want, where in this case we'll be moving it to the end. So we'll be getting this expression, which basically translates to this expression. As we have did a Taylor series expansion to this, we were able to rewrite the expression that we were working on, hence confirming it. Thus, we have found that for a given quantum mechanical wave function at time zero, we have a well-defined operator that will tell us about the state at time one. It is the time evolution operator. So this operator is incredibly important because this operator tells us how a quantum mechanical system evolves over time. And this is why H of quantum mechanics, the Hamiltonian, is incredibly important in quantum mechanics. The PDF of this whole video can be found in the description.